Hello and welcome to AirConf 2014. I'm here with Fellini Hermans from the Netherlands calling way across the world in to share some great knowledge today on spreadsheets and graph databases. Uh, Fellini is a researcher and entrepreneur in the field of spreadsheets. Her PhD thesis finished in early 2013 centers around techniques to transfer software engineering methods like small detection, refractoring, and testing to spreadsheets. So really excited to have her here today and uh, well, anyway, I should take it away and give us a little introduction. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Or good, morning. good afternoon, if, uh, if you're in a different time zone. My name is Feline Hermans. I'm a professor at Delft University of Technology, where I research applying methods from software engineering to spreadsheets. So what I found doing my research is that spreadsheets are graphs, too. And you might wonder, are you sure that a spreadsheet is a graph? Because if you look at a spreadsheet, you can see a spreadsheet in the next slides. They look very tabley. They look nothing like a graph at all. They they look very square and flat. But actually, my take on spreadsheets is that spreadsheets are really mislabeled. Many people see that spreadsheets are code. Uh, that spreadsheets are data. They think spreadsheets are just used for data, but actually, spreadsheets our codes. That's really the gospel of my entire research is spreadsheets are code. You should look at a spreadsheet like you look at a piece of code. You might not believe me, but I have three reasons why actually spreadsheets are really code. First of all, spreadsheets are used for very similar problems. If you look at the spreadsheet that you see here, it's an investment calculation. You could do this in any programming language. You could make it in Java or in a web application in JavaScript or in C Sharp or in a spreadsheet. It's a very similar problem. You have some data, you have a few calculations you want to have calculate, and then you have a desired output. A typical program that you could program in any language. A typical problem that you could also use a spreadsheet for. Second reason. So I go to great lengths to make my point. I actually went to such great lengths that I programmed a Turing machine using Excel formulas only to show that spreadsheets are Turing complete. And this Turing machine somewhat went viral on the internet. Many people seem to enjoy the fact that I made a Turing machine. And I did it. So again, I did it with only formulas, so no VBA just formalized. And as you can see in the visualization, it's not just a proof that a... Uh, could you go one slide back? Yeah, yeah. It won back. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so it's not just a nice proof that formulas are Turing complete. It's actually also a pretty nice visualization of a Turing machine. So you can see here every row is an uh, iteration of the lint, and the yellow boxes made with conditional formatting show where the heads of the Turing machine is. So you can really see it moving over the link, so pretty nice exercise. The third reason that spreadsheets are actually code is that they suffer from typical source code problems. Like they have a very long lifespan and they are used by many different people during their long lifespan. So they, on average they live five years and they're used by 13 different people. This is the result of my PhD thesis. So these are typical software problems. And artifacts that stay alive for a very long time, undocumented, shared by a lot of different people. Typical problems you see in software, but the same problems you also see in spreadsheets. Yeah, so one, only one in three has a manual, long lifespan. Many people work on them together. So in summary, both the things that people do with spreadsheets, the complexity of spreadsheets, and the problems that spreadsheets suffer from are really similar to the problem that people have with source code. And this is the entire core of my research. My PhD dissertation and also the research that I'm doing now are all about let's help people that make spreadsheets go through the same professionalization as we did in software engineering. Because in software engineering, we had the same problems, let's say, in the 70s and the 80s. But what people did is they came up with techniques to battle that, those problems. Uh, code smells, refactorings, TDD, things that help people build responsible code. So you can say, if spreadsheets are codes, then could we use those software engineering methods as well? And my take on this is yes, 
we can. Spreadsheets are so similar that it's very easy to translate the methods from software engineering to spreadsheets. And I will give an example. Yeah, next slide, please. So one example where you can really easily transfer methods from software engineering to spreadsheets are code smells. Code smells, probably you are aware of the idea of code smell, are pieces of source code. They're not necessarily an error or fault or result in a fault, but they are a little bit tricky, like a very long method or a method with a lot of parameters. Maybe that's not exactly how you want to schedule, uh, how you want to structure your code. It doesn't have to be an error, but probably it needs some rework. So those smells are easily transferable to spreadsheets. Here is, here's an example of a smell. Pop quiz. What's the name of this smell? When I tried this at a different conference, someone in the audience said, bad naming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is true. I, and I was too lazy to change my slides, so maybe I'll do bad naming as well. Very true, but that was not the smell that I was going for. Actually, this is the feature envy smell. So the ah. method I is actually envious of those nice fields X and Y that class A has. He would maybe even rather oh. be in class A than in class B. And this, of course, is an indication that something is wrong with the way you structure your classes. So I guess you can sort of easily see how this would transfer to a spreadsheet if you would just think of a worksheet instead of a class and a formula instead of a method, then the exact pro same problem could occur. You have a formula in one sheet, uses a lot of cells from a different sheet. Yeah, and that's probably not a good structure. So I made um, a tool to analyze such code smells in spreadsheets to help spreadsheet users understand how smelly their spreadsheet is and where the smells occur. So in order for me to do that, I needed to save this information into a database. So what formula relates to what other cells in order to be able to calculate, am I referring cells in the same worksheets or are my cells in a different worksheet? So I needed to uh, save the information into a database. Ah, OK, pretty easy. Here's the structure that I used. You have a spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet has a number of worksheets, and a worksheet has a number of cells. So far, all pretty easy. But then the cells can ref refer to each other. So the cell can have references. And those references can either be cells, again, as you see in this example, A7 plus A9. Or the references can be ranges, as you see on the left-hand side, the sum of A1 to A5. And that range A1, A5, again, consists of a number of references. So there are two types of connections, either directly or through a range. And smells are a little bit different in a range. So I wanted to save this information into a database. And I actually only knew one type of database. And I'm sure you know the saying, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, there I was with my SQL hammer, which was the database I uh, sort of grew up with. So I thought, oh, I have a SQL database. I'm going to use that on my spreadsheet cells smells problem, and I'll just put it into a SQL server database and see what happens. So let me take you through the, the adventure that happens. Here's a query. This is just the number of worksheets in a spreadsheet. That's not, not a, a big problem yet. Just a spreadsheet ID with the number of worksheets, and then you have a join so far. So good. I was still pretty happy then. But of course, I need different queries as well, the number of cells in a spreadsheet. OK, two joints, oh, still OK. So then in order to calculate my feature envy smell, I needed to have the number of connected cells for a given cell. And as you saw in my, um, in my data scheme, there were two types of references, either directly or through a range. So first, the query part for connecting through a reference, yes? Next slide. Yes, perfect. So that's still OK. Two joins uh, from a cell. I had an auxiliary table for cells connecting to other cells, and then a, a join again to a second cell state. OK, that's one part. 
still acceptable. But then I needed the other part as well, which was a little bit longer because, well, you need two joints because we needed to go from the cell through the range through the precedence. Three joints. It's taking me some time to think this up, but still, okay. And now I just needed to merge these two tables. So here's how the query then looks. Not very pleasant. And this wasn't, only, this wasn't even the only problem that it was getting sort of lengthy. When you try to do this in SQL Server Management Studio, this happens. Yes. So if your tools start telling you that things that you want to do, well, OK, he could still calculate it, but he couldn't give me a visual preview. And then maybe I'm sort of on the wrong path here. So this was coincidentally the moment that I was at a conference and I saw a talk about Neo 4 j And that made me think, hey, maybe this is not a nail. Maybe my hammer isn't the best solution for the problem. Maybe I'm smashing a problem that I should be treat should be that should be treated in a different way. So I thought, let's try Neo because it's very connected. It looks exactly like the problem, uh, the solution to the problem that I had. So I thought, okay, well, let's let's give it a try. I was at a offsite, offsite at a customer for a week, so I thought, oh, why not try to exchange the SQL Server for Neo and see what happens. So here's a presentation of how my data looks in Neo. Still, you have spreadsheets, the uh, green circles. They have worksheets, the red ones, and then the worksheets have cells. Those are the pink ones. But now my cells can connect directly to another cell, as you see from A8 to A2, just cell to cell. But they can also go to a purple circle, a range, purple node, from A8 to the range A4, A7, and then A4, oops, can you go a little bit? A4, A7 goes through. Uh, co connects to all the cells in the range. And if you structure your data then, this query that we had in SQL, you can suddenly write it in this fashion. That's a lot nicer, isn't it? It's so short. It's only <laughs> one, one line. It's really nice. And I wouldn't say, you know, this is, this is the power of Neo. That would be a little bit unfair. It's more the power of using the right tool for the job. I'm sure that we can come up with examples where SQL Server is just a, a way better solution than Neo4j. But for the problem that I was solving, it was actually very nice. To be entirely fair with you, this wasn't my first attempt. My first attempt to see that in the second query here, it so, was somewhat like this. It was a little bit SQL-like. I was still very much thinking, OK, a cell goes to a range, to another cell. It's, it's like a join. It's, it's structured a little bit differently. But the arrows, if you put joins instead of the arrows, it was, it's basically the old query. Sure. So it take, took me, at least, from getting used to thinking about data in a relational way and not in a table related to another table way. But of course, then, at, um, after a while, you get used to it, and then you can start writing the really concise and nice queries. Here's another example. The number of cells in a spreadsheet. And this was my first attempt. Yes, here was. So this was my first attempt. Really, again, you can see the sequel like, through, the, through the paint. It's still underneath it, the cell and a worksheet, and then a join, and another join. And then you return the outer ones. So this was my first attempt, but after a while I got more into Cypher, and then my query started to look like this. I didn't think about what's in the middle. I don't need to express the worksheet between the cell and the spreadsheet. It's just a cell, and two hops away, it's a spreadsheet, and then give me the spreadsheet and the cells. So that's it, basically. That's the, the story of how I transformed spreadsheet analysis tool from using SQL to Neo. For all of you that join in a little bit later or just missed a part, let me re uh, summarize the entire talk again in a few slides. So if you missed anything, this is your second chance to understand everything. And if you did got everything, then this 
summary might be optimal preparation for any questions you might have. So first of all, spreadsheets are code. I really hope you remember from this talk that spreadsheets are code because they are used for very similar problems. They are just as complex because they are Turing complete, looking only at the formulas, and they suffer from typical source code problems like lack of documentation and a long lifespan in which many people use it. So what I did is to analyze the smells within spreadsheets, which are like code smells, a little bit differently, I saved spreadsheet information into a database, and I used to use a SQL database for that, but after a while it didn't fit my problem so well anymore, so I transformed the database from being SQL to a Neo4j database which was a nice exercise. It's really, I can recommend it to all of you because it's a really good exercise for your brain to think in a different language or a different database. It's, uh, it keeps you sharp. And I found that for my problem, Neo4j was really nice because it made very long queries a lot shorter, even though, of course, it took me a while to get the hang of doing it in a proper way and not just you know, sticking to the SQL way. So that's it. Thank you for listening. Let's see if there are any, are any questions. Awesome. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, well, I guess, uh, uh, Ajay, did you have any questions to start off with? Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, it's really cool what you're doing with, by taking the cells and turning it into a SQL database so you can query it. Um, have you had any companies that use it for like dashboarding or trying to get more like value out of like spreadsheets that they have on a daily basis that they're using? Um, so we I haven't seen companies that use it for dashboarding. What we have built on top of this, obviously, if you say smells, then you say refactoring. So what we're doing now is building a refactoring tool on this, so that if someone, for instance, writes a one plus a two plus a three plus a four, not only can you smelly, but we can also offer a refactoring, like the sum of A1 to A4, which obviously helps people to get more, more value from their spreadsheets, because they will, they will be quicker in calculation, it will be easier to read, uh, less error prone, so that's more or less the direction that we take it. Cool. Um, and, uh, like, I don't know if this is exactly appropriate for, for this thing, but uh, I guess what, like, I've... Uh, like, I've heard a lot about Neo4j. I've done a lot of complex things in spreadsheets. Like, what's an example of, like, I don't know, maybe if you want to show us, like, in a quick demo real quick of, like, how do you do, like, the first thing? Like, how do you, <laughs> like, how do you just get started on moving over to those type of queries? Like, is there, like, a starter project that you maybe want to take us through in a couple minutes just to, like, see what that looks like? I mean, just to, I mean, yeah, like... Yeah, so it depends a little bit, I think, on what your case is. If you want to, so obviously I didn't start with the smells immediately. First you just start with, there are a few good demos online. Of, uh, they have an example, for instance, of movies, movies and actors and uh, years of the movies. So something like that is probably easiest to start with. You play around with a few examples. There are a lot of uh, examples online where they just have the query, query window in the browser. I can... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. If, if you can share screen and just show, just show us that, that would be really interesting. You don't have to install anything. You can just try it on a database that they already have online and play with a few queries. That's, I guess, the best to get a, to get a hang of it. And cool. then in the new version of Neo4j, the new for, from Neo4j 2.0, they have a load CSV option, which is really nice if you're really transferring your data from an existing database through Neo4j, you can just make sure you export everything as CSV files, and, be, and any database system can export as CSV files, and then you can load your entire CSV files into Neo, and that might take a while, but that's really nice, because then you have your own data to play with, which is obviously better to play with than demo data if you're a little bit more advanced, because your own data you can try queries and you will know you will have some expectations of what the results will be, so you will know uh, what to try. Cool. Um, and, and also just like on like a larger scope, um, like in terms of the things you can do on a spreadsheet and things you can do in Neo4j, uh, like 
is, I mean, because you were, you were mostly just talking about, like, reducing the complexity of the query, which is, you know, has a lot of different ramifications, but, like, uh, did you also start experimenting with, like, things that you couldn't do in a spreadsheet that you could do in Neo4j? I mean, like, not just, like, an, an uh, efficiency thing, but just, like, a, you know, fundamentally couldn't do this type of yeah, query. Yeah, so, so what you could what you couldn't do in, in SQL joining is if you have two, t two cells, yeah. uh, or you have one cell and you want all related cells in undefined number of hops. I don't know. Okay, if right. Everything in three hops because then I could write three joins. If I right. want everything in four hops, I write four joins. But if I would want to say, from this cell, where can I go in, I don't care how many hops, there's no SQL that you can use to express that. Well, maybe with store procedures and I'm sure that people are listening now, they're like, oh, I know how to do that. But <laughs> at least not in it. You're in like, a, I will write it more elegantly than you will. That's yeah. basically what you're saying. But that's a query that you couldn't easily at least cool. express in SQL. And what we found is that the new 4 j interface, you, you saw a little bit of it. The, the circles that I showed you are actually yeah. from visualization from the query browser. They're really <laughs> nice and easy to navigate. And when I was working at, the, uh, at a customer, with Neo4j, I can really have them click through the data, whereas if you give them SQL Server Management Studio. So it also enabled us to, to have a conversation about the data because it was just easier to browse and easier to share with people that are not data geeks. So that and, was awesome. And, and did you, did, did, yeah, yeah, go for it. Making the, making the queries easier is not just about um, elegance, but it's also about speed of analysis. Because if I can think of, oh, I really want to know that, and then if I can write it in 20 characters, it allows me to explore my data better than if it takes me half a day to make the query, then you know, it breaks your flow of, oh, I would really like to know that. So it's not just about elegance. It's also really about enabling to get to know your data. And have you made a Turing uh, the machine you know, in, in Neo4j yet? Oh, no, I haven't. I'm sure that's easier than in formula. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like that would kind of bring it full circle, you know. Oh, that's a good idea for the next one, then. P.S. <laughs> Cypher is also true and complete. Yeah, Cypher has a lot of elements of functional programming, so I'm sure it will be easy to do that. Good exercise. I leave that as an exercise for the viewers. Oh, good job. I like that. Complete the complete the talk with the exercise. Yeah, the exercise. Getting yeah. current complete. That yeah. sounds awesome. Uh, Ajay, do you have any other questions or any other things that you think this might help out in your tangible day-to-day -day work environment? Um, yeah, so I had a uh, client that had uh, financial data coming into a spreadsheet. They basically had all their stock trades information was coming into the spreadsheet, and then they <laughs> wanted to do more complex algorithms on top of it. This was back in the day of... I guess Office, like probably 2003 or something. So the Excel spreadsheet was obviously just getting loaded with data and slowing down. It wasn't very updating very quickly. And then they would add these more complex formulas to try to get more information out of it, and it would just basically be grinding their system to all. Um, how, how have you seen, like, the new versions of Excel and some of the, like, I saw that the newest version of Excel actually allows you to connect to a SQL database. And, and things like that. So I, I was interested in seeing like how you know whether there's some of these old clients that I can go and say you know upgrade the spreadsheet to the new version now connect it to a SQL Server and hire somebody with some experience to begin to do some of the complexities. I don't know if you've seen anything like that before. <clears throat> yeah. So it's yes, yes and no. So in a sense, Excel is getting better. Microsoft sees other initiatives on the market like maybe. You can <laughs> Whoa, which is a, a data visualization company, or ClickView, which is an add-in on top of Excel that takes users further than Excel can do. And so Excel, Microsoft sees that there's room for a more powerful Excel. And the newest versions in 2010 and 2013, they have provided an add-in that's called Power Pivot that allows you to do big data analysis, so analysis on data from the system server. So it's like Excel but it's a lot powerful, so that makes it easier for people to, to do big data analysis. However, even with those new versions, I'm sure that there will still be people, especially in the financial domain, software, that manage to 
push even the newer versions of Excel to their limit. Because as, as I, with my simple hammer, Excel for them is the only tool they have. And I'm, you know, I'm a researcher. I can install a new database. I don't have to ask anyone. I can just do that. If, <laughs> if you work for a big financial company, they, they're not going to say, oh, sure, you want to install new for j That's fine. I'll do that for you. So, First of all, it's the only thing they have. And second of all, even if they would want to learn something, it's just not feasible if you have to work with a lot of people and even get it installed on your machine. And it's it's free, it's open source, so you could do it, but it's probably difficult. So I'm sure that people will find the limits again. Yep. Very true. Awesome. So uh, do you have any like plans that you're going forward with like kind of the next projects you're gonna be doing with Neo four J or well, uh, yeah, so, so one of the things I already mentioned was the refactoring engine that we're building on top of the smells. Uh, okay. This, again, will also, uh, will also run on the Neo4j backend. And the final thing, sort of in the same line of things that we're doing, of course, if you say smells, you say refactoring. And then if you say refactoring, you say testing. Because also users, if they're going to refactor their spreadsheet, especially if it's handling all of their swap trades, then they want to be sure that it functions the same as they're expecting it. So something else that we're working on is a tool called Xpector, which is a tool that does TDD, test-driven development, tries to get the ideas from TDD to spreadsheets. It allows users to define tests in their spreadsheets using spreadsheet formulas, which is, again, um, the paradigm that they know, and then we calculate the impact of the, of cool. the changes. And again, the impact analysis, of course, is also dependency analysis, so that would run on Neo4j as well. Cool. One question. This is kind of a little bit, a little similar, but a little bit different angle. Um, now, I mean, you were saying that you're a professor, and uh, so, in terms of like doing research, and then also like let's say focusing on a proprietary or you know like like a something like Neo4j, which is a proprietary, I guess, software. Uh, like what? How? Like is that? Is there any issues with that, or is that just normal? Or like how does? I guess, yeah, I guess how does that? How does that work? Or I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? Um, so neo is is not proprietary. It's, it's, not. it's open source, but they have so they have a community edition which is free, and they have a, a okay. more elaborate edition for companies. But okay. yeah, of course they can decide to to take it offline tomorrow because it's still their project. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, this is a very tough question. So in a sense, do you want to depend on something like that? Maybe not, but on the other hand, you want to use the tools that will enable you to do your research best. It's my yeah. job to work on spreadsheets, and the university doesn't really care how I do it. So if there's a tool that helps me do my job better, that's fine. But obviously, it, would, um, it wouldn't be a disaster for my research if I didn't have Neo4j anymore. I could use another graph database, or I could use right. SQL, uh, an old-fashioned relational database as well. Um, it would be inconvenient for me, but yeah, I mean, I would put a grad student on exchanging it back, I guess, and that would, <laughs> no, that would, that wouldn't harm the idea of my research, which is looking into spreadsheets and how people use it and what's the context of it. So it would be a mere inconvenience. Cool. I, well, I mean, what's interesting with that is the, you know, like the freemium model of like open source stuff, you know. Yeah affects things in the enterprise and things like that, and then also, uh, you know, I guess, you know, translates also in the research community as well. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, 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 that mimics, like, what's happening in the, you know, yeah. the private sector, which is interesting. Um, do you have any parting thoughts about your opinions on the future of Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets <laughs> uh, in terms of looking at how people use things? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very interesting question. Obviously, I get asked that a lot. At one point, maybe will people start doing their things in Google Docs instead of in Excel? So again, for my research, it doesn't really matter. It would be the same problem as exchanging the database. Then we would have to write a tool that imports the Google Docs info, what cell relates to what, and then still our smell detection would, would run. So it wouldn't necessarily be a problem for me, but obviously it would be interesting. Are companies going to trust Google with their stock tickers? Yeah. I think that is a long way because more and more it seems, uh, I mean, of course, it's not really my field, but it seems that people are getting more concerned about privacy issues. 
not more uh, and more, not not less. So I'm I I seriously doubt whether companies would put their stuff in Google Docs. But then uh, yeah, I also wonder how many of those people that are like worried about putting their spreadsheets in Google Docs use their Gmail powered Google Apps uh, email yeah. to email physical copies email of their Excel documents back and forth, yeah. which is functionally the exact same thing. Yeah, it's true. And and even I mean, I I. Again, this is not my field, but I can I can imagine that yeah. risk of someone breaking into your private company building and taking a machine is bigger than someone leaking stuff from Google Docs. If you're if you're a reasonably yeah. sized company, who would be interested? But so it's not really about the real security; it's about the perceived security. Yeah, perceived security. I just was wondering, like, in terms of like the fact that it's web-based, is that like in terms of if you're gonna like power it with connections to like like a SQL server, or if you're gonna like power it with you know something else, like like is the fact that it's web based enable you to I don't know connect things easier? Well, at, at least one of the pro- one, so there are several problems, a myriad of problems with spreadsheets. But one of the problems that you already hinted at is a little bit is emailing spreadsheets around. So many problems with spreadsheets occur because I send you a new version, but then when you need the spreadsheet, you don't remember that. You just grab the version you have from your desktop. Right. So that problem would be solved, in a sense, if you have everything online. Also, I mean, if you use SharePoint or a similar system within a company, that problem is somewhat addressed by them. And also, which is sometimes it happens that we see those new spreadsheets that RJ talked about. Getting very very slow, and if you have to spread it online, you can hook it up to a data center, and it would be quicker. So some of the problems related to the smelliness uh, would also be well. Uh, so we, we always say it's a good thing to relieve your smells first of all because it's <laughs> but also for for optimization of your spreadsheet because if you do clumsy things, then it will get a lot slower, and for some companies is actually a problem. So that would also be somewhat by having it online. Uh, we also have a question coming in from Chris McKnight. He says, uh, what are your thoughts on Google's graph database? I think it's Kaylee. Uh, C-A-Y-L-E-Y. Uh, do you have any experience using it? No, I have no experience using it. Um, so I can't say anything. I think um, my entire talk could be about another graph database as well. It's, m- it's merely about a graph database versus an old-fashioned database, and not necessarily about Neo 4 j It just happened to be the one that I stumbled into. I didn't. And try and you just, you just happen to be uh, located slightly close to them, as they're uh, they're a Swedish company, I believe. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, so, you know, but you're I, like repping northern northern Europe. I was at a conference in Lithuania where I saw I saw yeah. that. Cool. Awesome. Um, Chris says awesome. Period. Thanks. Exclamation mark. So that's okay. a solid. Right. solid. <laughs> Ajay, do you have any other questions over there, or are you uh, are you about good? Okay, I think Ajay is full up of knowledge. You can tell he's just you know brimming with it. So I don't know if he can really retain any more. So <laughs> I think we're probably gonna call it before he has to you know <laughs> really say goodbye. So um, do you have any uh, last words and just like kind of what you're what you're thinking on? And if you want to tell them any more about how people get in touch with about the refractoring engine that you were talking about, if you want to share any of that. Yeah. So if people want to get a look at my research, my website is felina.com. That's just my first name.com. Super easy. And there you can have a look at the refactoring tool. You can even download the refactoring tool and the testing tool from my website. So if you want to know more about my research, then please go to my website. Or of course. Have an air pair with me if you want to know more, either about spreadsheets or about me or for day or about SQL. Feel free to look me up on air pair and propose a session. <laughs> well, let me say, I have to say that as a Joe, I'm very jealous of your first name.com website. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm going <laughs> to. So that, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the link is on the page right, uh, right now, so people can well, check that out. I'm going to put on the little this guy right over here. So, again, this has been a, uh, a talk with Fellini Hermans on spreadsheets and graph databases as part of AirConf 2014. Uh, if you want to work with uh, Fellini, you can visit airpair.me slash Fellini or visit Fellini.com for some more information. Um, and, yeah, so let's give a big round of applause for Fellini. Thanks.
so much for the great information and knowledge about the databases. A bunch of clapping all the way around. And so uh, on that, hope you have a great day. We have one more talk uh, today. And if I can bring this up as fast as possible, we're good. And that's going to be on understanding Google's Panda algorithm. That's going to be at 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, which is roughly four hours and 20 minutes from now, I believe. Um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And again, thanks so much, uh, Fellini, for spending with us and sharing all what you're working on. You're welcome. So Cool. Uh, have a great day. Bye. <laughs>